In this episode, I discuss sensitive topics, including parental acceptance of LGBTQ plus people and the effects that a lack of acceptance can have on youths. If you are personally in need of mental health support and struggle to or are unable to comfortably speak to your friends, family or anyone else you may know, I have linked to the United for Global Mental Health website below, which includes some mental health hotlines for a number of countries. Of course, I don't have that many listeners, so if you DM me because you needed someone to speak to, I will reply to you as soon as possible. Sadly, if you are experiencing suicidal thoughts, there is help available to you, so please visit the Wikipedia link in the description. It has a list of national suicide crisis lines in many countries around the world. I wish everyone the best. Welcome podcast listeners, and happy Pride Month! Today is the first day of June 2022, a month to celebrate the LGBTQ plus community and the progress which has been made towards equality all over the world. Today is also World Milk Day, but aside from the fact that gay people drink milk, can't really work that into a podcast. But today is also the global day of parents, so I'll be speaking about parents from a different number of LGBTQ plus perspectives. First, I'll speak about parents and the importance of accepting your child for who they are. Receiving love and support from your family is an important part of any child or any person's existence, and in relation to the LGBTQ plus community, over the years it has become easier for children to come out to their parents as we live in a much more accepting environment than decades ago. But even as society becomes more accepting, there are still parents who fail to accept their children for who they are, whether it be in what would be termed as more progressive countries, like the US or the UK, or in more conservative countries. Nevertheless, it is clear that family acceptance is important for LGBTQ plus youths. Dr. Caitlin Ryan, the director of the Family Acceptance Project at San Francisco State University, conducted studies which outline the importance of fostering an environment of love and acceptance from a young age. While studies show that young people, without bringing sexuality into it, first discover a sexual attraction to another person around the age of 10, whilst the average age that youth realise that they fall into an LGBTQ plus identity is above the age of 13. Uh, ju and uh, just above the age of 13, that is, with some even reporting they have come to a realisation of sorts as young as the age of 7 or 9. I think these facts in themselves outline the importance of one, an accepting environment at home, and two, an education system that teaches people about the diversity of sexuality and gender. This would make it so much more so, and so much easier for youths to be accepted by their families and people around them, but most importantly for them to understand and accept themselves for who they are. But when society continues to teach about so-called normality, being a marriage between a man or a woman, or the fact that there are only two genders and you are what you were assigned at birth, and parents bring these kind of ideas into a household, youths often struggle to find their own identities. Dr. Ryan reported that when parents adopt hateful attitudes, young people either suppress their sexuality or gender, or when they come out, they face rejection, putting them at higher risks for personal, physical and mental health problems when they get older. According to her findings, between around ages 21 and 25, those who faced high levels of rejection are more than eight times as likely to have attempted suicide, nearly six times as likely to report high levels of depression, more than three times as likely to use illegal drugs, and more than three times as likely to be at high risk for HIV and sexually transmitted diseases when compared with gay and transgender young adults who were generally met with acceptance from their families. When children come out to their parents at one end of the spectrum, they celebrate their child's identity. They celebrate the fact that their child has been able to grow up and understand and accept and love who they are. But on the other side of the spectrum, they reject their child or even throw them out of the house. For whatever reason, if it be cultural, religious, or the fact that they think they have failed as a parent, some parents respond in this extreme way. Dr. Ryan summed up that parents generally fall in between these two ends of the spectrum, and over time, with experience and external support, they become more and more accepting. There are a number of organisations that cater to supporting parents and assisting them in growing to find better ways of supporting their children. In the US, PFLAG is a national organisation with meetings and groups all across the country aiming at providing support to families and parents of LGBTQ plus individuals and creating an environment of acceptance and equality. Similarly, in the United Kingdom, 
F flag provides a place for parents, groups, and families to be assisted in learning how to create a loving environment and how to deal with possible stigma faced in society. Finally, GenderSpectrum.org is a California-based website which provides resources for educators, parents, youth development leaders, medical or mental health professionals, faith leaders, and young people with the aim of creating gender-sensitive and inclusive environments for all children and teenagers. And it also allows people, such as parents, to begin to understand more about youths and their children. In summary, parental and familial acceptance is vitally important for a child's mental well-being. For families of LGBTQ plus youths, there are organisations to which they can turn to to receive support for themselves, and in turn, they'll be able to properly and lovingly support their own children or family members. Moving on to the next section of my podcast, which is about adoption. In recent decades, the number of LGBTQ plus families and children has increased with evolving legislation which allows for adoptions and reproductive technologies for same-sex couples, like surrogacy. In the USA, same-sex couple adoption has been legal in all 50 states since 2016, whilst in the United Kingdom, joint and stepchild adoption has been legal since 2005 in England and Wales, 2009 in Scotland, and 2003 in Northern Ireland. In the US, approximately 4.3% of adults identify as LGBTQ+, whilst as of 2016, there were an estimated 114,000 same-sex parents, compromised of 28,000 male same-sex couples and 86,000 female same-sex couples. Meanwhile, in the UK, according to the Office for National Statistics, 2.7% of the UK's over-16 population identify as lesbian, gay or bisexual, whilst a further 0.5% identify as transgender. The Office for National Statistics reports that according to 2013 statistics, there were 12,000 same-sex couples raising children in the UK. Although this is an outdated statistic, the trend has shown that the number of children being adopted by same-sex couples is on an upward trend. In the US, laws are slightly more complicated than in the UK, as they are different in each state. The information which is provided by Stonewall makes it clearer in the UK, but a lot of information is also applicable in the United States of America. There are a few ways in which lesbian couples get pregnant. One of these is a licensed fertility clinic. In the UK, you can get help at an NHS licensed fertility clinic, but historically, some lesbian couples have had trouble as most NHS fertility clinics were originally set up to treat infertile heterosexual couples. But there are still some clinics which do treat lesbians, and the treatment you are able to receive is generally decided on a case-by-case basis through your local primary care trust, health board, and referrals by your local GP. Some do make the choice to make private fertility clinics, but these clinics are generally very expensive. When lesbians want to have birth by themselves, they can go for known sperm donors or unknown sperm donors from a sperm donation bank. Some even choose to get pregnant themselves. The less appealing option is to find a male friend to have sex with, and some choose to use a sperm donor for self-insemination. Of course, you can find a surrogate to have your child for you, especially if you are a gay couple. In the UK, commercial surrogacy, that is paying for someone to have your baby, is illegal, but it is illegal in some states of the USA. Aside from surrogacy and giving birth yourselves, for lesbians that is, or some transgender people who decide on giving birth, same-sex adoption has been legal in the UK since the legislation was implemented in 2005, and it has been illegal to discriminate against same-sex couples looking to adopt since 2010. Meanwhile, in the USA, joint with a marriage equality law passed in 2015, LGBTQ plus couples have the right to adopt throughout the United States. However, some couples still face challenges and bias, especially from religious adoption centers, which may be unwilling to allow same-sex couples to adopt. Although attitudes towards same-sex parenting have improved as the number of same-sex couples has increased in the United States and public condemnation of same-sex parenting decreased from 50% in 2007 to 35% in 2011, sadly in the US there are still efforts to repeal these laws which allow for same-sex adoption, but these, so far at least, have been unsuccessful. Today is the Global Day for Parents, so thank you to our parents for raising us. That is, unless you've been rejected, then, well, they are not worthy of your elite gayness. Well, thank you for listening to this episode of my podcast. The next episode will be released next Monday. (laughs) 
Thank you for joining me on my podcast. Subscribe to be notified when the next episode releases and be sure to check out the links in the description of this podcast if you need any help or if you want to contact me or visit my website. Also, what is up with the fake Grey's Anatomy leaks? Who decided to leak that Taylor Swift was going to be in the 400th episode as a cameo? That person is a dirty, dirty liar. How dare you? I was so looking forward to it. I mean, it was still a good episode, but you know what? Never mind. I hope you're all well. Uh, Please take care of yourselves and see you in the next episode.